Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool pinball-ish repair video for you. These are Williams uh, Pennant Fever Pitch and Bat Pinball Machines. They have little balls in them. It's not really a pinball machine, though. But, you know, same type of thing. Same board set. Kind of. We'll get into all that. <laughs> uh, we've been working on these. We've got two of them. And they both are kind of limping along. So we figured we'd film a video of the things being repaired. And if you didn't see the first video, go check it out. Basically, we looked through the bottoms and the heads of them. Looked at a couple even older ones that we have in the back. You might enjoy all of that. Go check it out. And uh, this one has a little bit of battery corrosion on the uh, main board. And the displays don't work. There's some connector issues on the power supply. And that's kind of what's going on with that one. Uh, there's also a magnet assembly missing. This one, it's working, but same thing. There's some connector issues on the power supply. The displays don't work, but it does not have battery corrosion on the main board that I can see. But uh, we're going we're gonna to get them both working. We don't leave anybody behind, people. They're both coming, coming back to life. So what I'm going to do is, um, they're both, I can get them both to boot, even without batteries in them. But I, neither one of them have displays that work. So what I'm going to do is work on the power supplies on both units. That's what we're going to do on this video. This particular one, see how the light is just going on off and off and off? That's because somebody wired it straight to the power supply. It's not supposed to do that. But we'll mess with that too. Eventually we'll get all this stuff fixed perfect. So I think what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to go ahead and pull this power supply out of this one. And... Uh, we're going to rebuild it because I'm, I want to see if I can get my display voltages back, which I am assuming is the problem with the displays not working. Now this is a kind of interesting setup because this is a got uh, got them. This is a Williams System Eight, so the displays are ran right off of the MPU board, which is very weird. On I believe on all of the System Nines, the next system up, there was a there was a uh, master board that that controlled the the uh, displays. But on this one, as you can see, they just plug right into the uh, the PCB, so I didn't even I don't even know how that's possible. <laughs> but we'll uh, we'll figure it out. I've got the schematics and everything. Um, so we'll look at that and uh, we'll see about this power supply. As you can see, they have a wire just daisy chained right to the uh, the power supply. Let me brighten it up and you can see. So the wire for the light is just attached to one of the test points. That ain't right. I don't know where it's supposed to go, but that ain't where it's supposed to go. So we'll get it back how it's supposed to be, though. Don't worry. We're going to make it all right. Um, and this uh, connector here has been all hacked up. So we kind of need to figure out what in the world is going on with that. It's trying to cooperate. It's happy. It must be happy that we're finally fixing it. It's probably been neglected and abused for years, and we're finally fixing it. Okay, so we're going to turn her off. I'm going to pop out this power supply, and we're going to get this thing back the way it's supposed to be. And then uh, we'll go from there. But there's some connector issues going on we got to figure out. Like, I don't want this. Look, look at this. Yeah. Um, but if we can get the display voltages back, we'll, uh, we'll get our displays back. You know what? First, first, before we pull it out, let's see what the voltages are supposed to be, and then let's see if they're missing or not. Okay, so first things first, there's this little chart here. We're going to look in the schematics, but look what it says. So the high voltage is F1. The high voltage is what makes the displays work. Lamps are F3. F4 is not used. And then F2. Now see how they draw See how they draw it? But look what's going on in here. It kind of looks like the fuse is in the wrong place. That top one is the high voltage, according to this. What's up with that? What are they thinking? But, uh, hmm. Surely to God, it's not that easy. 
All right, so I'm gonna, I wanna, uh, well, let's look at the other one. Let's look at the other one. Let's see if they screwed up both of them, or maybe that drawing's just wrong. System 8, there was only one game, production game, that was this one. So, they were different on the other one, System 9. So on this one, they have all of the fuses in. Hmm. You know what I'll bet? I'll bet it's blowing that top fuse and they pulled it out and never put a new one in it. That's what we're going to go with, people. Let's just pull the power supply out and we're going to, we're, we can test all that outside of the, uh, the game. Look, this one is drawn out. It is on that one over there, too. So that fuse is not what they think it is. <laughs> okay, so I'll pull out that power supply. We'll put it on the bench and then we can test all that stuff on the bench. So let's do it. Okay, here we are. Yeah, so I looked on the pictures that I'm seeing online. None of them have that light on the top. So, this, so the operator, both of those are from the same operator. He must have added them to all of them. But it's annoying as hell just sitting there running the whole time. I guess in an arcade it wouldn't make as big of a deal. But I'm not all about the mods, people. Not a big fan of the mods. So that thing might go in the damn trash. But I'll leave it on there for now. I might be able to think of a way to make it where it works whenever the um, the bell goes off. There's a bell down on the bottom. Um, maybe some way to get it on that. I don't know. Hmm. Let me think. We'll think about that later. I think there's a switch on the bell or something. So you might be able to put the switch or another switch in the power line so that it turns it on and off. Something. I don't know. Don't hold me to that, people. I might not do that. I might just take it out and throw it in the trash. It's not original. I like original. Okay, so here's the here's the high voltage area up here. Let's see if that top fuse is the one that runs up there. Yep, bigger than hell. So the power runs in here off the transformer, through the fuse, and then up into the, the, the uh, high voltage section. So let me, uh, let me test some stuff and see if any of this is fried. Oh, wait a minute. What the hell? What in the world? Man, what have they been doing to me? Can you see any of that? There are cuts in the traces, probably because they're putting the wrong transistor in. So they cut the traces. I'll bet the back's all strangulated. Hell yeah. Somebody's getting cute with it. Look what they've done to my baby. Oh, hell, they did it over here, too. Wow, that's got to go. Yeah, so they've been swapping the transistors with different ones, which is probably fine if you know what you're doing, but I don't know what they were doing, so we're probably going to undo all of that crap. If it ain't working, it's coming out. You hear me? It's coming out. Um, yeah, so that's all been kind of rejiggered a little bit. So I'm going to check these diodes and these diodes. I'm going to check these resistors to see if they're burn up. And then we're going to see if these transistors are screwed up. And uh, then we're going to replace them with the original ones, which I think I have, if those are screwed up. I'll we'll check this diode, too. And then we got these two transistors here that might be of an issue. And that just leaves us with these two resistors, so hell, let's check them, too. So I've got the schematics. This says System 9, but somebody has written that on there. This is not a System 9, it's a System 8. Okay, people. So let's see if the power supply is listed in here. Uh... Nope. I guess I can get it off of a System 9. Surely, though, they'll say what the um, input voltages are. Let me see if I can find that just so I can show you how they did it on this one. So on the, on the later ones on System 9, the, the power for the, for the uh, displays does not come onto the CPU board, but it must on this one because the, um, the ribbon cables do. 
when a System 9, the ribbon cable comes off the CPU and then runs over to a master board, they call it, which runs the displays. But on this one, the actual CPU is doing it. Uh, it's 12 volts up there. I'm just looking to see if there's a place where it shows the power coming in. Yeah, here we go. Power display. Plus 90 volts is running in on pin 2. And negative 100 volts is running in on pin 6 of J18 on the power board. So it's sending out a 90 and a, and a negative 100. So that's similar. Um, I really wish, though, that I had a schematic of the... Uh, power supply because I think it's probably slightly different than the ones in the um, I think it's probably slightly different than the ones in the later games let's see if it's in this a little too bright for you You should at least be able to see what I'm flipping through. Let's see here. Just telling you how to do tests and setup and all of that good stuff. Um, this is a drawing of the exploded bat unit. And the control panel. Or, no, I guess that's the uh, switch unit in the back. This is the pitching unit. Lamp matrix, switch matrix. Okay. Uh... Well, I guess I will just see what's in it, and um, we'll go off of that. Um, we'll just make it back like a System 9 would be. So let me test some stuff and see what I run into. Look what I found. Schematics for the power supply. They were on the back of the other set of schematics. I am all the way live now, people. So it's 90 volts AC, and it comes in. Here we go with the brightness again. Runs through a fuse, a few diodes, and then here's the deal. Those transistors are weird ones, man. SD, SDS201, it says. And then the other one is SDS202, which are way obsolete, very, very obsolete. But there are alternatives, so if you can find a 2N6557, that works for this one, or a, a CENU10, that works for this one. Supposedly these are still made. And then on this one, an MDS60 works for that one, or a CENU60 works for that one. But you can replace both of these with a MJE15030 up here, but you have to move the legs, or an MJE15031 here, but you have to move the legs. So we're probably going to end up doing that, if they're bad. But I don't like the looks of how they hacked them in there, so I'm probably going to replace them anyway. Okay, so let me test through the stuff now that I found the schematics and I can see if everything seems to be the correct part and working, and then we'll go from there. Okay, folks, the back of this transistor is blown slap out. And that is a MDS60, which apparently was an alternate number that Williams was using for that one. Um, and then... An alternate number for this was 2N6557, which if you look, that is what that is. So, that could be a factory mod, actually. Um, I don't know. Could be... Hmm. It's 
Now I gotta decide. I mean, I gotta replace that one. Hmm. Okay, so I guess I'm gonna replace it and then put the stuff back the way the silk screen is. Um, because that's what uh, those need when you put it in. So I don't know. It could be that's a. I'm just going to replace it with this, and then I'm going to see if the schematics line up with the if the silkscreen traces line up with what the the uh, schematics say, and then we'll run with it. So uh, let me take both of them off the board, and then we'll I'll show you how you have to cross the legs to make it the alternate part number fit. Okay, I figured out more interesting stuff. Are you ready? Hope I haven't lost you yet. So this power supply looks newer than the other ones. The, ca the capacitors look a little newer than the one that's in the other one. And so I started thinking, as I was changing all the capacitors with new ones, I started thinking, I bet this is out of a newer game and an operator just swapped it in because they're all the similar over the years. So that is the part number for a power supply out of an F-14 Tomcat, which is a much later game, several, three or four years later. So this is a newer version of the power supply. So when I was researching those obsolete part numbers for the two transistors, the, this one is the one that's blown apart, I've got an MDS-60. And remember I was saying, it looks like there's a mod, there's a factory mod or something. Well, if you look carefully, the way you make it work with an MJE15031, which is this, is the legs are in the wrong position. So this center leg needs to go over to the right, this left leg needs to go to the center, and then this right leg needs to go to the left. But, since this is a later board, it has pads built into the board that already do that. What do you think about that? So I can clean those out, slide it in there, and I'll be good. Now, where it's been cut, I'll just put it back together and take that stuff off the back. They must have rigged it up somehow to use this transistor, but we're just going to use these pads and the ones there and get a nice clean mount for our two transistors, and we should be good to go. The resistors, the diodes, everything else is fine. It's just that one was blown in half. Um, there's part of it. That would be we be why our displays aren't working, people. That would definitely do it. So let me work on that a little bit. Okay. I wonder if I've got the focus turned off. <laughs> let me see if I got my focus turned off. Hell yeah. <sighs> Boy, that would have been nice to know a while back. Okay. It's hard to see what's going on, but... Okay, look at this side. Okay, see how you can put a transistor in the three bottom holes, right? But if you use one with a different pinout, like this MJE15031, the middle leg mounts where the right leg would have been. The left leg mounts where the middle leg would have been, and then the right leg mounts where the left leg would have been. It crosses in the back. The same thing is going over here. It's silk screened on the board like that. But see how that bottom leg curves way around to become the left leg? If you do that on this one, it picks up the this part of the diode, the the the, uh, the side with the line, whichever that is, of the diode connects right in there. So if you do that, you're connecting that to that pin. And that's not how it's supposed to be. Over here, it's connected to this pin. So if you do that, you're connecting that diode from there to there. So that's some kind of mistake on the board that they were fixing. I don't know why the hell that was silk screened like that, but that's some kind of factory thing. Um, so I cut it back loose. And then on the back what they've done is, so see how the you need to connect that middle pin to the left leg? So on the back, that's where they had that jumper connecting the middle pin to the left leg, so I put it back in, and I left those discon those pads disconnected. And then up here, there is a little wire jumping from there to there. 
if that wire is not there, nothing gets to that, that, that uh, pad, and then none of your voltage gets to the edge of the board. So, I don't know, man. I don't know why they did it like that. Um, so, it looks to me like the jumper and the two wires were necessary from the factory. I don't know. So, I pulled up the schematics for a uh, F14 Tomcat. And they are slightly different, but it's pretty much the same. Um, so, this, uh, this one, that's the diode that we're talking about. You cannot have the, this is the ground, it connects to the ground of the, the line of this side and the not line side of that. You can tell me if it's anode or cathode. I'll just forget it again. It's irrelevant. It's the side that has the band on it. That's all that matters to me for what I do. But uh, it connects to one side of that diode and one side of that diode. Well, there is never, neither one of those, it shouldn't, neither one of those should connect to both, that transistor and that transistor. So anyway, I look at it, that's an error from the factory. So I don't know. I don't know, people. Something don't add up. So I left it how they had it hacked. Because I think it's a factory hack. What do you think about that? So we're going to put it back in the game and we're going to test first to see if we get our 100 and our negative, or 100 and our negative 100 before we plug anything in. Uh, and if we do, um, that power supply is good to go. Okay, folks, we're going to turn it back on. Watch for the fuse to blow the top one on the power supply there. It blew. <laughs> Damn. Okay, now everybody calm down now. Come on now. Look, it says quarter amp slow blow. I had a fast blow in there. And it blew real fast. So that's probably how it's supposed to be. So that's a slow blow quarter amp. So let's try it again. It might do the same thing, but hopefully it just did it because it was a, <laughs> it was a fast blow. Okay, that one's waiting a little longer to blow at least. Damn light scared the hell out of me. Okay, so I have the display connector disconnected. I have my trusty multimeter. Now y'all keep giving me crap because this thing's filthy. It's that's that's how you know that it's a good one. Look at that. You know how long it took me to get that dirt on there like that? That's how you know this is a good multimeter. So I'm gonna very carefully try to reach in there with this thing and barely touch one. This might be a shocking experience. If you see that fuse blow, you know what happened. Negative 100. 104. I'm cool with it. All right, so our voltages are there. So I'm going to turn it off. We'll plug that that uh, plug. I hit the wrong button. I'm going to turn the game off. <laughs> We're going to put that plug back on, and then we're going to see if our displays come up. Now, it could be that the displays themselves are bad. Um, so we might not be out of the woods yet, people. And it could be that the CPU board, since it's involved, acts up once you plug it in. Now, I don't know. Boy, I hope that 100 volts is drained out of there. Okay, same thing. We're going to turn it on, see if this freaking fuse blows. Yep, it did. Mm. Well, damn. That's not good. Hmm. Once it has a load, it blows. I wonder if that's a shorted display or if it's a, something on the board. Let's look at the schematics. So when the voltage comes in the power display, it runs right into a Zener diode that I guess drops the voltage to 90 volts on the CPU. And then over here, 
it runs in and the negative 100 does that and it also does this cathode keep alive. So there is a diode that it runs into that could be shorted. But then what happens is basically it has that those voltages there's a bus on the board that sends them out to displays. So player 1 see negative 100 plus 90 player 2 player 3 and player 4 and it appears that that's all that it does. This is really unique. Um, I may be wrong about this, but as far as I know, this is the only damn game like this. It could be that some of the shuffle bowlers are like that, but because I haven't worked on those, but none of the pinballs are like this. The CPU doesn't get the power, the high voltage. So what usually happens is the power supply creates those two voltages, and then it sends it to a display board that handles the displays. And the reason for that is because there's, there's more of them. So there's five displays or whatever. So it looks like the difference between System 8 and System 9, again, this is the only released game for System 8, is they, they moved the display stuff off of the CPU over onto the, to the display board, which they call the master board. But, uh, so what it does is uh, this information that it gets, so, you know, basically the, the CPU has to tell the displays what to, what to play, right? So it creates all of that information and then it sends it on a ribbon cable over to the uh, master display board. The master display board gets that information and the power and then sends the voltages and the information. So see, this is the units and the segments. It sends that information to each separate display. And the, the, the master display unit has these UDN chips, chips and everything on it. So, uh, basically, this would be going out to the master display board somewhere through here, and then all of this would be on the master display board. So this is, that, that must be the difference between eight and nine. So what I wanna do now is I'm gonna unplug the two displays, put a new fuse in it, that's a slow blow, turn it back on and see if we're still good with the CPU plugged in. Because if we are, then that means that that diode is probably good. And then I'll slowly plug one display in and the other display in and see which one fries the freaking, <laughs> fries the fuse. So we'll go do that. Okay, folks, so I took it to the next step. That That is a Zener diode right there. It tests fine with the multimeter. But sure enough, if I, if I unplug both of the displays and plug in the CPU, um, that alone blows the fuse. So... To the best of my knowledge, that's the only place that voltage actually runs. It looks to me like it... Yeah, see, that's the harness running straight from over here. So... Everything's cool when we have the voltage until I plug in the CPU, and uh, it's doing it even with the displays unplugged. So... Something on the CPU is doing it. It looked real straightforward, but it must not be. There must be a cap or something. So the next thing I'm going to try is, is checking those two uh, voltage pins and seeing if they're shorted right now. Like they may be shorted together or shorted to ground um, with the board just sitting there with the power off. All right, now we're getting somewhere. So I checked with the connector disconnected between pin 5 and 3, high resistance, between 5 and 2, high resistance, between five and six, low resistance. It's only six ohms resistance, so something screwed up there. And I tracked down, look how it says, it's plus 90 and negative 100, but then this cathode one, it almost acts like it's separate. Um, so I don't know. It looked like on the schematics though that that went to something else, like that it did it on the actual, on the actual display board. But uh, we're going to pull the main board out, and we're going to look at this connector and see why 5 and 6 are connected. There must be some kind of cap or something, or a solder splash or something. That, that shouldn't be like that. So we'll pull it out and look at it. There's lots of screws holding that thing in. A big pain. But I'll go get it. Okay, so apparently something traumatic happened to it, and it, uh, it fried it. So uh, there's like... It's a carbon thing. 
So this and this are basically conduct conducting. And that's our whole problem. So we need to clean that up a little bit. On the front. So that connector has burnt for some reason. Um, one of the displays shorted or something. I don't know. The, they both seem all right to me. They don't seem shorted. Um, maybe it came from the other end whenever that... Uh, uh, you know what I'll bet happened? They had the damn thing overfused probably. So instead of it popping that fuse real quick like we saw it do, when this fried and it started sending the wrong whatever... <laughs> It didn't pop the fuse and it just kept burning and now those two are kind of charred together. So I'm going to take this connector off and we're going to see what's up with that. Somebody has replaced the battery connector, so that's cool. Somebody's re somebody's worked on it a little bit at least. Um, so yeah, I'll pop that off and uh, we'll see what it looks like underneath it. And then we'll put a new one on it and that should get us going. With the displays at least. Um... Let me show you, though, what I'm talking about. I'll show you the, the measurement before we start. Okay, so pin 5 there is ground. If I come over and grab uh, pin 1. I've got 1 meg resistance. Ground and pin 2. 1 meg resistance. Ground and pin 3, which is our other voltage. 400 ohms resistance. Ground and pin 6. 7 ohms resistance. So there's, there's, you know, you've got a connection between this and this that should not be there. Um, so we'll take this connector off and see. It'll be easy to follow that sixth pin too because those voltages only go a couple places like we saw on the schematics. So it's going to run through that trace and then come to here and bounce off to another trace and then come over here and it's basically going out these connectors that go to the displays, but only two of them are populated. Three of them are not because uh, uh, the it's not for a pinball. It's just for the pitch and bat. It only has two displays. So uh, we'll pop the connector off and see what it looks like underneath it. Okay, so underneath the connector, there was this pin had burned, so there was some carbon built up all around it where it had burnt the board. This pin still looked like this, but it was a ground, and it's connected to the ground plane. Well, this doesn't really need to be there, because there's other ground pins uh, on the other power connector, which is this one. Um, so what I did was, your problem is, a long time ago whenever I was doing the Asteroids um, deflection board, that video of it being all burnt up and everything, a lot of people were saying, uh, you should replace all of that. It's conductive. Well, I know it's conductive, but on that one, it didn't really matter. But on this one, it does matter because they're right next to each other, right? So your problem is this board, once it's burnt, it's carbon. Carbon is conductive. Matter of fact, a lot of traces on certain things are made out of carbon. So there was a conductive trace between here and here because the material between here and here was burnt enough that it was conducting. So what I did was, I enlarged this hole to get rid of as much of the carbon as I could, and I got rid of this whole pad um, that the ground was on, and then I cut it loose too from the ground plane all the way around the edge, so that even if this is still connected to this, it won't be connected to this. Now remember, you gotta think about this. This is a System 8 board, like I was saying. You can't get these. This was only for this game. So it would have to come out of another pennant fever, and I'm not trashing a whole other cabinet just to get one board, you know. We're going to fix it one way or the other. If I have to put the damn connector right in the middle of the board, we're going to do it that way. <laughs> okay, so here on the back, it looks ugly, but what I've done is I've enlarged the hole to get rid of as much carbon as possible. I scraped back the trace so that I can have something to solder to. And then again, on this pad here, I've completely cut it and isolated it from the ground plane. So now, if you measure between here and between this hole, it is not connected to the ground plane. So hopefully that should be good. You can see on this, this powered connector, the ground just comes in and immediately grounds. It's not like they're using it for anything. But another thing that I found while doing that, 
is this chip's not populated, but IC32 is a 7180. It also gets the negative 100 volt. So that's the only thing on the board that also gets that voltage. So I removed that chip and checked the two pins on it, and they are not shorted together. So the chip is probably fine. Um, so I'll put a socket back in the board and pop that back in. I'll put a new connector on um, our big mess here. And then I'm going to check continuity, and we'll check that out, and then we'll go try it in the in the machine if everything looks cool. Okay, folks, so that's the logic ground. I got them on backwards, but that's the logic ground. There's our pin. No longer connected. Now, if we connect the logic ground to the pin that was ground, it's not connected. 5 volt is 380. Let me make sure that is 5 volt. I think it's 5 volt. Yes. So the, the the resistance between five and ground is like 380 ohm. That's pretty that's pretty uh, common because a lot of times there'll be capacitors and stuff from across ground and five, and so they usually have a little lower resistance like that. And then here is our uh, 90 volt, 1.1 1 .1 meg. That was 0.7 meg. So I think we're good. So uh, I put the chip back in. Now the actual board, you know, we have to service it too, but somebody has already replaced the battery holder with a brand new one that's nice and shiny. Look how pretty. <laughs> um, and the game seems to be up and running if you watched our previous video. So I'm going to check all these transistors for the lights just to make sure there's not a problem. Um, These resistors look really bad, but they're like that on all of them. You just check them to make sure they're still uh, within spec, and that's just how the things run. They run really hot. You can put uh, bigger ones in, and you can put um, uh, more modern um, transistors in. There's some kind of mod uh, where you can get rid of these, but they run fine like this. They just look ugly. So I'm going to check those to make sure they're all right, too. And then uh, we'll be ready to put this one back in. On the other board that we've got in the other game, whenever we do it, we've got we've got battery corrosion. So we're going to do we'll do more of the board on that one so that you can see it coming up in this series. But on this one, I'm just going to check it, make sure everything's cool. We're going to pop it back in because I want to see if we can get these displays working. That would be a cool way to end the video. All right, so here we go again. Got the board in. Shouldn't have a short. Has the new connector on it. We're plugged up, but we do not have the displays plugged in. So check the top fuse, see if she blows. She did not blow. Okay, all the lights are up. All right, so here's the fun part. Are you ready for the fun part? That says right. Okay. So the red line goes towards one. Yep. This one says left. What do you think? Now the displays themselves may not work, but let's see if we blow the fuse. We did not blow the fuse. That's how you do it, folks. In case you were wondering, that's how you do it. I wonder if there's a test I can figure out how to get into. I did it again. <laughs> okay, it needs to be down. There we go. There we go. What a way to finish it out. What a, what a, ooh, what a rush, like Hawk would say. If Hawk was here, he'd say, ooh, what a rush. Very cool. Let me turn off the lights so we, we can get the whole effect. Damn it, we worked hard enough for it, didn't we? 
You think anybody else would have went through all that trouble? I bet some people would. I bet there are some like-minded folks out there that would have went through every bit of that trouble. So there you go, folks. Leave your comments below. We'll go ahead and stop here on this one. We'll come back next time and keep working through it. It still needs a ton of work. And then uh, this one here is sitting here dead. <laughs> right? So leave your comments below. Give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it for you and showing you how we did it to the best that we can. And uh, we'd like to thank everybody that's been using our Amazon links. Thank you very much. Tons of people have been doing that, and we appreciate it. We see you out there. They've been buying all kinds of stuff on our links, and by doing that, it gives us a royalty. So if you click, if you're going to buy anything on Amazon, click our link first, and it will uh, it will give us a little piece of it, a little piece of Jeff Bezos' money. We love it. We love it. Um, and make sure you check out my brother Donnie. My brother Donnie is our brother channel. He's my real brother Donnie, and he's always getting into trouble, doing all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, We've been working on some cars and trucks and stuff over there lately. He just started uploading videos that he has somehow that he recorded at the Grand Old Opry. <laughs> like all the old country singers. So uh, there's always cool stuff on his channel. Go check it out. It has nothing to do with arcade games or pinball machines, but you'll probably enjoy it because he's a, he's a fascinating person. So uh, leave your comments below. Give us a thumbs up. And make sure to tune in tomorrow for the next video. I have a feeling this is going to be one of those long strings of videos where there's several of them. So... Even though I film these way in advance, I feel safe in saying there'll be one tomorrow. So I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.